My name's Anders Varner, and I help busy dads get strong, lean, and athletic without sacrificing family, fatherhood, or fitness. In today's episode, we partnered up with Coach Travis Mash, and we're talking about the start position and first pull in the clean, as well as your setup in the deadlift, how they're similar, how they're different, and how you can optimize both. For all you dads out there looking to get strong, lean, and athletic without sacrificing family, fatherhood, or fitness, get into the description. There's a free resource called the Diesel Dad 100. It's 30 workouts that you can do in under 10 minutes to help you build muscle, lose fat, stay athletic, get the fire back in your training. Click the link below. You will immediately be emailed 30 workouts that you can do with minimal equipment to get strong, lean, and athletic without sacrificing family, fatherhood, or fitness, because that is what Diesel Dads do. Let's get into the show. Hey, we're hanging out at Gym 365 here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We're gonna be pulling some triples here in deadlift. Um, the big thing that we wanna talk about is the differences between the setup and the clean versus the deadlift. So if you go back a video, you can watch us dig into the clean for about 10 minutes and some of the intricacies of the setup, finding your midfoot. Um, and I think there's a little bit of a debate, and you're writing an article right now on the differences and similarities and I think what you're kind of coming to the conclusion is that there's way more similarities than there are differences in um, in the setup. Right. Well, I mean, um, so I did this big, uh, I wrote a book, number one, it's called Pulling Science, where I, I talked about the pull as it relates to the clean and the deadlift. And then I actually surveyed over 100 uh, top athletes and coaches, not just random athletes, but the, the best of the best, asking them, do, do they see any similarity? I worded it two ways. Do you think that the setup and the clean and the deadlift is similar? Uh, and then I ask, actually worded it, you know, uh, when it comes to the clean and the deadlift, do you think about, you know, sitting your butt low and keeping your chest up, or do you think about having your butt high, chest down? You know, anyway, the end result is like, it's pretty much even. Like whether it's a clean or whether it's a deadlift, the majority of the people would think about, you know, keeping their chest up and having a slightly lower start. However, there's a big you know, move. I know Andrews is one of them who in the deadlift starts with the butt a little bit higher. And I get it, you know, you're talking about the glutes, the hips being the strong uh, move, mover in the deadlift. However, you know, I would say I like starting a little bit lower because even though my quads are being used a little bit, what it's doing, it's saving my glutes for the tip top to where when I need to lock out, you know, I still have a lot left in the hips. And even though I'm lower and it's a little bit more quad, it's very little. So even though the quads are helping the hips, it's not going to, you're not going to miss a deadlift ever because of your quads, unless it's the signal. Then the quads are coming to play pretty heavily. But in the conventional deadlift, it doesn't. So it's not like that you're saving the quads by doing a higher butt. It just means you're putting everything on your hips versus like having a little bit on the quads and a little bit on your hips. With that being said, if I have completely weak quads, which I, I know, um, how do I say this? Like Dr. Deadlift, I forget his name, but he's an amazing deadlifter. But his squad is like, it's good, but it's, he's an amazing deadlifter. So for him, maybe it's a good idea because, you know, he seems like he has stronger hips. So to have a little bit of higher hip, maybe that works out better because he's got a really strong glute, you know, really strong hamstrings, longer arms, weaker quads, so it makes total sense. However, if you're a very balanced, say you have strong quads, strong glutes, strong hamstrings, strong back, then I would say a lower start would be your best bet because you're going to save those muscles. One last point is a two when my hips are high, what you did do is create more work on the, on the back because what happens if you want to create more demand on the spine or the hips, all you have to do is create a more horizontal torso. So the minute I do that, the back just got harder and the hips got harder. So if you have a weak back or if you feel that your back is already being taxed enough, I would still say it's a lower start. So with that being said, do whatever works for you. You know, if you've got strong hips and strong back, by all means, high hips. But I definitely wouldn't say absolute that there's two ways, that the, the deadlift is one way and the clean is one way. 
it's all always going to be individual. I think my final point of all this is that if the, if the strict condition world could get away with, could get away from having so many absolutes, we would all be better off. And just teach people what are the pros and cons of each movement. Yeah, I actually love for you to check this out. I feel like I always have higher hips and a more sh vertical shin angle, but I can't actually see behind me, so I very rarely actually get someone to check it out. Honestly, you, I would, because I know this, I know you're a really strong quad. So I would definitely question, you know, I would say for you, I would, I would do clean. I would do the deadlift the same as the clean. Just lower. Because yeah, you got, look at your quads are huge. And like, you've even told me that your pull is like your weakest thing. Yeah. So why, I would not go to the, you know, completely to my hamstrings and glutes. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, and then it's, it's way harder on your back. Yeah. I think one of the things also is like, the, the methodology or the sport that you played while you were learning how to lift weights is a massive indicator of your movement patterns, right? So somebody that is in powerlifting is going to have a very different pull because they came from an education system in which one rep max is the only thing that matters. If you come from the school of CrossFit, which I played for 12 years and competed at, a, at the like regional level, my goal is to be able to move weight as efficiently and quickly as possible so for me, having a higher hip kind of makes sense in that I just want to hinge, bounce, and lift the weight versus really be focused on only top end strength. I need to be able to move 315 for many, many reps versus 500 for a single rep. So there's going to be some sort of school of thought that you were raised in, your coaches were raised in, and being aware of that. So Travis is talking about kind of that one rep max, how strong can you possibly be doing something? And I'm still interested in being as strong as I possibly can be, but the school of thought that I came through is the CrossFit thing where being efficient, moving one joint, not having to drop my hips is going to be a much faster way. So I'm leaving a lot of top end strength on the table, but that turnover speed is gonna be a lot faster. This is another thing. For whatever sport you're playing, you should probably do what's best for that sport. But if you're gonna be lifting as much as possible, listen to that man. If you wanna be more efficient, you might have a little bit higher hip as you start to progress into connecting reps, reps together. Well, yeah, okay, so he just brought up a valid point. Like if you're a CrossFitter, 100% what he said is true. Like just doing, you know, hinging at the hip and like creating less movement at the knee is the faster, more efficient. Yeah. So that's definitely one part of the argument that I did not consider that's totally correct. Yeah. I need to think about that. I got a whole bunch of weight here. And lift with metal plates because they're loud. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, so do you, when you teach having that squatter stance or having like what some people would consider like a clean setup, does the knee or does the shin angle push forward? Yeah, it's just like a clean, yeah. So it's not where you're not sitting back in your heels and yeah. trying to get your shoulders behind the bar. And yeah, I'm, I'm doing the same as I would in a clean. The only thing that changes is the intent. So the mo moment I start to push, now I'm gonna start to get behind. Yeah. So, because I don't have to worry about uh, horizontal. See that? It, we always call those clean poles. Yeah. And then when you go to weightlifting, it's, those are just deadlifts. Yeah. Everything's a clean pull if your sport is the clean. If you go watch, like, uh, if you look at Ed Cohn, Kirk Kowalski, these are dudes from my era, of course, or even uh, Dan Green. I mentioned these dudes in my book, The Boy Science, like, they all, it looks like a clean. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're just optimizing each joint. You know, they're wanting to, like, minimize the moment arm at the knee, the hip, and especially the back. The back is what's going to get you, especially because, you know, by increasing that moment arm at the back, you better have a very strong back. Yeah. Because the thing is, is powerlifters, they're thinking, I need to save my back for squatting and for deadlifting. So they're really trying to, I did, 
I try to minimize the strain on my back as much as possible. Yeah. Whenever possible. Okay. That does a better job of keeping the bar in tight to your body too. Yeah. Like there's many people doing that with the higher hip and just hinging over. It's going to be easier for the arms to swing in front sure. of you. Right. So if your dip down or your hips are lower, it's going to be easier yeah, to keep go the back bar. Getting that position right there. Where are you just sitting? Like, like I've seen now look at the angle. It's so it's easy to use the last to keep the bar in. Now go higher. Now look at the angle. Now it's yeah. like a, you know, a, a 90 degree angle almost, yeah. versus 45. So it's like, obviously it's easier to keep a bar in with a 45 versus a 90. So yeah. Yeah. Immediately that was the first thing I, I thought that it's gonna be easier to keep the bar in tight. And then we talked about hook grips. You know, I do double over in hook, which is easier for me to let my arms hang long. But you know, doing the over under is fine too. But, uh, the heavier you get, the more of a chance you get at, at tearing a bicep. So. hits on your more mid back yeah. too, than like in that shoulder, upper thoracic. I'm gonna be so tired. <laughs> right? Recap on uh, starting position, kind of some of the similarities and differences. For maximal strength, make sure you're dropping your hips like Travis is talking about. Um, aligning shoulders, knees, getting those hips a little bit lower. Yeah. You got it. That's good. You know, one, one last thing. This is from Stuart McGill. Thinking about, you know, uh, at this point, you know, whereas weightlifting, you would say cleans ex uh, internally rotating. On this one, you probably want to externally rotate. It just really makes it easier to lock in that scapula. If the scapula stays nice and tucked, it's easier to keep the whole spine nice and neutral. Yeah. We'll see you guys next week.